identity is not tied to your ability to play an instrument. You, you're far more creative than just that. And I think the the difficulty with musicians, and I, I think I found it a little bit, you know, oh, Dan's a drummer and that becomes my identity, but I'm much more than just a drummer. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm really creative. I'm far more creative than I give myself credit for. So it's kind of like the gold coins. You were never probably given one gold coin. You were given five gold coins. So how do you multiply the five gold coins without feeling like, well, everybody knows me as this musician. Like I can't be doing anything else. How have you been since the last time we spoke? Yeah, good. We, um, uh, uh, there's a particular sort of contact relationship that's been going really well with a bassist who um, has been very keen to sort of hang out and play and mm. um, got offered some more gig work, which I need to chase, um, actually. Some sort mm. of more regular club style driving gigs which would be great so um yeah things have been good uh and i've sort of set basically i was told myself i was like january we're going hard because yeah. december was really crazy with all church yeah. stuff basically yeah uh but in general yeah pretty pretty good the um but yeah january i need to be out in person more and I'm going to be posting more. That's those are the targets I'm setting myself. The big picture targets. Good. I also. think ultimately as well, you know, as we come to the end of the year, typically like we need a rest as well to then get fired up for the next thing. And there's nothing worse than being burnt out uh, because that doesn't help anybody. So if you can kind of, you know, now right now just like staying consistent and then ready for the step up is is good because you don't want to be like. I need to do it now. You know, it's good that you're thinking in January, I'll hype up to that moment because sometimes we can put pressure on ourselves to, to always be doing the next thing, the next thing and never actually plan for the, the stressful nature of what Christmas is, generally speaking, right? Which is difficult. Totally. And that includes yeah. people that, that we want to work with as well. It's not just me yeah. that needs a break. It's the rest of the world too. <laughs> Probably a bit like, sure. okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, as, yeah, as you'll notice, like, I've been emailing a bunch of business owners in um, in Wales and I'm getting a bunch of autoresponders saying I'm out for Christmas now, you know, which is fine. Like, it's cool that you're doing that. Like, I'm going to personally do that as well. So uh, I give myself like two weeks off, which will be nice. Um, but yeah, how, how about the um, saxophonist that you um, that you were talking about last time that we spoke? Yeah, I'll be honest, I haven't really acted much on that. Yeah. Um, we've sort of interacted on social media a bit uh which is a good thing which is a great thing yeah. um but not loads i've actually uh i've sort of found out that he has a few more mutual friends than i realized um mm. uh with me so that's great that's really good and mm. um just sort of another thing to think about uh mm. but in terms of like collaborations and stuff that we were talking about i'll just Basically, I was saying, like, I think I'm going to set aside every Thursday mm. in the new year, starting on whenever the first one is, like the 8th. Or yeah. The 6th or something. Uh, and, and, just, and just sort of make things that I can collaborate with people, if you know what I mean. So make yes. tracks just under a minute for the, for the gram, uh, or if they need to be, it can be a reel or whatever, can't it? But yeah. um, I'll, just put, I'll just put a thing together and... Uh, Put myself on it or text someone and be like hey do you want to just throw a thing over this mm. and either they'll say yes or they'll say no and like we talked about last time it's okay if they say no yeah <laughs> uh even if that is like the thing that makes you feel bad you're like oh no wait you don't have to take everything personally all the time so, and that's uh, and it's super hard right it, it is really hard to get to that space because ultimately you, you know we're we are all are emotional beings so i completely get it and it never it doesn't necessarily get easier sometimes especially if you're putting yourself out there like consistently all the time it is hard it is hard to do that but i think the lightness that you're starting to like i'm going to go in really light and also batching batching is a concept where you will take a day to do seven videos or six videos and then it's you've got them sorted for the net the rest of the week or whatever so i think all that stuff is really good keeping the lightness to it is important because you then you know you're going to consistently do it more often than not yeah. you know yeah. which is really really yeah. good really good mm. 
Absolutely. And I've got, um, I don't know if we talked about this last time, but I'm in the talks with someone about sort of building a bit of a brand. Um, it's just a really simple thing, just like typography that's recognizable. That's the idea. Mm. Just something, just, and he's a graphic designer. This person is doing the work and he loves the fact that my first name and my last name have the same number of letters. He's like, that's really cool. So we can <laughs> build you some kind of fun logo. And, but that means that once you have, once you know what the typography is and as in like the font and stuff, mm. you can just put that on each video and it just becomes like part of your own image or whatever. For um, sure. I, I think the simplest type of branding is even just picking a color to stick to. Like you, you may, you may have noticed, like I, Broadly speaking, on some of my socials, I've kind of done green as my color, and then yeah. on my on my business stuff, it's like more pink. So I, I've started to just you know stick to the to the colors and and has that kind of consistency. So long as it doesn't become you know a kind of a massive project, right? That it's another thing that you have to do because ultimately, yeah. if the main goal here is to pay your rent. A brand doesn't necessarily always have a direct impact. It will have a long-term impact. But, you know, as long as you're still making the videos and getting yourself out there, making the connections, and this is just a nicety to add to that, that's great. Because I think adding the whole um, professionalism, there's no harm in doing that. So long as it doesn't become, um, you know, oh, I'm now going to create T-shirts and jumpers and headed paper and becomes basically a distraction. So as long as you have that all yeah. in the right place, then it's completely fine. There's no nothing wrong with personal branding. It's it's a good it's a good thing. It's a good thing to have. That's good advice. I like that. Yeah, I've never been a huge fan on the whole making things outside of music your income because of your music. Like the biggest mm. earning. So at the moment, some of the biggest earning musicians are ones that own alcohol companies. Now I don't know if you'd heard about this. Mm. Right. And Ryan Reynolds right. is a good example when he did his aviation gin thing. I know he's mm. not a musician, but that whole marketing campaign, which was great, made yeah. this gin really popular. Everyone was like, oh, it's the Ryan Reynolds drink. And then he sold it. And I'm yeah. sure he still has a deal because yeah. he still markets it a bit. But now some of the biggest musicians, generally those who retired like 10, 20 years ago, mm. they're not like Paul McCartney, who just doesn't need to worry about anything ever. But, you know, they're not touring anymore. They're less in the limelight. They just bought like a tequila and they're just doing that now, which is fine if that's what you want to do, if that's your business model and you're like, I'm moving away from music. But I don't like you say, I don't want to create something which is like, this is actually what I do for a living, but I call myself a musician, you know? I think it's really interesting because broadly speaking, celebrities realize that one, they're getting older and they can't like, distribute themselves because there's one version of them so of course they have to come up with a slightly more entrepreneurial take on how to consistently make or, or grow their wealth plus also they might not acting might have been the first thing but they know actually I, i've always wanted to create a you know a drink or something like that like the rock is another good celebrity that, that's got lots of additional brands and additional things on yeah. the side and i guess that there's no harm in doing that and i think for you it might not be an alcohol but it might be you know, you know, there's a certain um, kind of mechanism uh, within your industry that could be helpful for someone else to know. For example, finding gigs, like maybe you have a list of a thousand venues and here are the a thousand emails of places you can play. So you mm -hmm. would then sell that to musicians because you used, you've used it yourself and now you're sharing it to others. You know, musicians are always looking for PR. So is it that you create a blog that gives them PR for a small fee, you know? So it, mm -hmm. I think it can, um, I, I understand, you know, sometimes you want it coupled, but also it's okay to have a slight pivot to the side as well um, because ultimately mm -hmm. you're helping people still. Right. And it's then in line with your music stuff. Cause you use this stuff anyway, like you need to contact a bunch of venues to see if you can get gigs there. So why not share that information and sell information basically. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah, mm. and it, and it doesn't happen. It doesn't have to be uh, an alcoholic drink or a energy drink or anything like that. But it also could be like there's. I, I think we're much more fluid in the sense of like your identity is not tied to your ability to play an instrument. You, you're far more creative than just that. And I think the the difficulty with musicians, and I, I think I found it a little bit. You know, oh, Dan's a drummer, and that becomes my identity but I'm much more than just a drummer. 
I'm an entrepreneur. I'm really creative. I'm far more creative than I give myself credit for. So it's kind of like the gold coins. You were never probably given one gold coin. You were given five gold coins. So how do you multiply the five gold coins without feeling like, well, everybody knows me as this musician. Like I can't be doing anything else, but actually those are the other gold coins that you have. So there is like a bit of an identity kind of struggle sometimes with musicians. Uh, you know, are you allowed to do something different? Well, I would say yes. And is that going to irritate a bunch of people? Yes, because it might be that you are not in the band anymore. You're doing something else over here, you know, and that's mm-hmm. completely fine. You are allowed to do that because you're far more creative um, than you might realize, you know, uh, as an individual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've been sort of thinking about pushing more of my MDing stuff as well, like musical direction. Mm. Uh, there are some artists, well, one in particular that I'm like, all you, what you need is someone to gather some musicians together and rehearse them two or three times. And then you'll have like a, like a real, like live band products to, to sell, right. You'll have like an actual, a slightly more tangible thing than like what they're currently doing. Mm. And I'm like, I could totally be that person, but I just need to start those conversations. But even like think, so you want to be an MD, let's take that route. Think about something, think of an industry where they kind of always need a MD type remit is weddings, right? You always need some sort of MD type person to put a wedding band together. Again, you know the connections. There is always going to be money in there because people do pay. They don't pay for wedding bands like church bands, but they'll pay for like entertainment wedding bands. So Mm -hmm. is there a prototyping kind of like, hey, let's find someone's wedding. I'll put a band together. We play a bunch of covers. And that's, again, an ability for you to get paid for your MDing, which is your experience. And then, you know, another remit would be local theater. You know, like how can you prototype it and and do it in Mm -hmm. the small? And weddings is a great example because there's always weddings happening and people know that they need to pay. So it's not as if it's like, you know, an artist might not have money. And the artist is like, well, I don't have money to do this, so I can't pay you, but I'd love to do it. And you'd be like, okay, cool. Shame. What a shame. I can't (laughs) do it for free. But weddings could be where you do do it and get paid, potentially. Okay, I like that. Yeah, no one does a wedding gig for exposure. That's not a thing. (laughs) Yeah. No one does that. (laughs) I think it's, it's okay to start there so you can get your people together, you know, have your contacts together. And, and it's prototyping the infrastructure that you'll then take and give to an artist and say, this is what we do. And, and this is how we've done it. And we've done it basically for the last X amount of months in weddings. But yeah. really what we want to do is like an artist support kind of setup. Because typically yes. artists don't have money. Or, and if they do, then, you know, it, it, it's probably going to be hiring, you know, whoever the record label suggests. So how do you get into that middle ground? Well, weddings could be a first starting point. And who knows, like I have a guy that actually does full-time wedding bands. So mm. if he doesn't play, then he gets his mates to pay a play. And he has like three or four wedding bands um, happening on a weekend. Uh, and it right. works out really well for him. He then is attaching a kind of equipment hire um, to that uh, function as, as well uh, as another mechanism for, for kind of creating some income as well. So I think there's there's lots of interesting things because you could be like, I'm an MD, but I also have this equipment. And if you don't want us as a band, you can have the equipment, right? You could have all this sound sound equipment as well. Like that yeah, yeah. doubles up. It's harder because there's a, the whole like delivery and pickup and stuff. But I mean, yeah. we as musicians are used to setting up and packing down. So I mean, why not get paid for it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. That's always been an interesting one because it's, it's just like, but once you've hired it out three times, you've pretty much paid it all off now. You know, assuming it's not a massive thing. And then, exactly. And you're all right. I've got a friend who does it as well. He's like, he does more like lights and a bit of PA, but mostly like lighting stuff. And mm. yeah, he just has to have a place to store lights. That's it. <laughs> he just has to have room for it. Cool. The amount, the amount of time that, because um, Kim has been recording music videos, like um, in a small kind of setup of like a videographer, 
me as basically a runner and everything, and then her as the creative direct, uh, direction. And we've been using that Fat Llama website for borrowing camera equipment or lights and stuff. Yeah. Again, I turn up at someone's house, take the stuff and then deliver it back to them. So I think there is a, a really nice kind of like, well, there's always like equipment hire kind of stuff. There's always like decent, decent money. Um, if that's the kind of route that you, that you wanted to do as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, ultimately you really want to be playing and being paid to play rather than hiring out equipment, of course. But. yeah yeah it's just it's it's in this like rental culture where you can rent out your car if you're not going to use it for a week or you can do you know you just like this is just taking up space or airbnb my house whilst i'm away or whatever it is yeah Beca it's becoming yeah. more of the norm right isn't it it's oh, of course norm. yeah nobody owns anything we rent everything yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if I've you can get into about... that yeah go cool. for it well i was just saying uh I've been thinking about trying to release stuff as well, but what I don't, uh, but what doesn't need to become my main thing is being like a, um, like an artist, like marketing, marketing myself or trying to get gigs under my own name, which sounds really backwards. Um, but I think this whole, going back to the earlier conversation of collaboration and um, working with contacts and people is just, a, is, is a continuation of this thing of like, I want to play with people in whatever capacity. And whether yes. that's in a wedding yes. band with an artist or whether that's with a jazz group because I have loads of mutual friends, whatever that thing is, it's like, yeah, great. But the, I guess, I guess maybe more similar to our uh, separate alcohol conversation would be like actually just putting music out there that people stream and or pay for. Um, mm. is a cool thing but having it come out of an organic way where it's like it's actually just these tracks that I'm putting out as just extensions of the jams that I put on Instagram you know mm. so I have this kind of theory that the jams or collaborations or whatever the one minute videos that go on the gram that do well or I actually genuinely really like mm. I can just sort of develop turn it from a one minute idea into a three minute idea I do it all at home because I got all the microphones and stuff here. And um, there was an artist that did exactly that. She basically filmed, oh, sorry, recorded like 10 or 12 30 second tracks. So then people could apply to their TikToks and dance to or whatever. And exactly as you were saying, she used that as an A-B test to see which tracks were most popular and then would fully produce the ones that had the greatest kind of like uptake in being applied to different tracks. And I think that's great because ultimately, even though there's an ego side of like, I create music for my own satisfaction, but really there, there does need to be a blend of, you know, creating music that inspires other people. And if this resonates with other people, then why wouldn't I create it? And yeah, yeah your, your approach is great. It has happened and, and always does happen. Create something very, very small. And if there's a bit of an uptake, produce it into a full track. I think yeah. there's, that is a well, a really good, well thought out approach and that keeps it light, right? There's no point producing a track that no one really is into unless you want it for your sake, right? Yeah, for your yeah. benefit. Because we know that streaming is, it is all about volume. Like the percentage or fractions of pennies that you would get from a stream, it's all about volume. Or... The other way to make money is potentially creating tracks that can get synced to TV or, or film. Right? There was a guy at church called um, Steve Tate, and he's actually now composing um, full-on tracks for adverts and, and films and stuff. And I think that's another really, really good way. Again, you have no like artist profile. You're just someone in the background that's creating these um, or composing these things and, and putting it together, um, and it's less... You know about you and it's about the collaboration that, that that kind of like facilitates yeah love that i've got a friend doing that or well, studying that he's in chicago which is really cool mm. uh studying a master's in like film and gaming uh composition mm. i love that he reached out to me recently actually so we've sort of reconnected and i'm cool. like that's another useful sort of contact thing there I don't yeah. know what he plans yeah. to do after graduating in Chicago, though, whether he's going to stay out there or not. But 
these days distance isn't a trouble hence our conversation here right oh of course yeah different time zones different regions and all sorts of stuff uh, going back to the kind of like wanting to really specifically play within jazz bands have you ever thought about um kind of or, or do you know how they source the jazz band for the pizza express stuff i don't know the specifics for that venue i know uh no short, short answer is no because <laughs> Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because you might know more than me, but don't they have like weekly jazz bands or, or something? I'm not sure if it's the same band or, or something. And again, you're wanting ultimately to couple in, like you want to do more of this collaboration band, like and specifically if it was jazz, that'd be great. Like, and ultimately you want to get paid for it. And if you can't get paid for it, then you need to create something else that pays. Uh, and, it, and that's my setup. My setup is I really want to do coaching or mentoring and typically, if you tie that with having someone to pay for it, it might not happen. Like if I have zero, if I have zero clients, then I can't do what I want to do. So yes. decouple it from having the financial backing to be like, okay, I'll create this agency, and this agency will pay for the fact that I can have these calls for free. And 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 that is a fine, fine setup. So for you, if you can couple it together and figure out, okay, can we play a, a gig here uh, and kind of do one of the jazz bands? I'm sure they, that that is an actual paid gig. I, I hope. And then that could be great. And if not, is there the whole alcohol business <laughs> that you've got that would then pay for the fact that you could play anywhere and, and do anything, you know? Um, yeah. Cause we know that streaming is a little bit more of a long game. Syncs is a more middle term kind of thing, but again, it's, uh, it's difficult because your track, you would still have to be creating tracks that wouldn't fit to adverts and fit to briefs mm -hmm. and stuff like that, which again is time consuming mm -hmm. and you might not get those, um, kind of things you know that's where teaching has been for me though teaching oh, is awesome my... so if i if i have no gigs in a month which happened a lot through lockdown yeah. um yeah teaching and the church job and my two sort of if if i if all i earn is my money from that i can i can do a month that's fine um, yeah. so this is the, the 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 place i'd like to be in is where uh i mean let's assume i stay in this flat for the rest of my life it's not going to happen mm. but you know my rent is the same and my outgoings are all the same it means that any extra music work i get on that on top of what i have now is just like extra income arguably disposable not that that's the great word for income because yeah, you shouldn't yeah. ever yeah. just dispose of it <laughs> but you know what i mean um so then uh so, so yeah, the teaching and the church job are my version of what you're talking about as in like awesome. making fun. And I love teaching. I'm, I'm very passionate about it. I'm yeah. quite good yeah. at it, but, um, and is that specifically guitar or is it drums? It's drums. Sorry, drums are my main oh, yeah. instrument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mostly yeah. drums. I do teach a bit of guitar and piano, but I get most of my teaching through drums, which is great. Oh, sweet. Um, Cause where are you in London? What, what area are you in? I'm in my well, lane. Right right by the New Jersey. All right. Because again, like for the for the jazz style stuff, Greenwich is a good place. That there used to be a bar in Greenwich where they had live jazz. And again, the the Royal College of Music stuff. I'm sure there's music stuff around Greenwich um, uh, as well that might have more teaching opportunities down that end. But I'm sure you are yeah, you teaching locally. It's Trinity. I act. I mean, most of it's online still. Oh, so uh, even better. So I just have a laptop. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, but the uh, if uh, if there was going to be another one to sort of describe what to do, what you're describing, which is like another income stream from live music that isn't the creative yeah. jazz, yeah. Stuff, it would be like functions like weddings that like we were talking about before. Yeah, which is yeah. like the yeah. conversation that people had definitely around graduation was like. Of I don't want to ever do weddings again, but I only want to play creative jazz music. And it's like, okay, but you get twenty pounds from a jazz gig and four hundred pounds from a wedding. So what are yeah. you going to choose? Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Like you either become a teacher or you become a performer in in a wedding band, right? Those are you kind of two others. So it's cool that you also love teaching because all this stuff is these are all your gold coins that you're utilizing, and and you've already got a great setup if you're doing it remotely that's perfect and I, I guess yeah if you want that to be the income the teaching side or as you said the the crash of job and all that stuff then it doesn't matter if you do this jazz stuff in a paid capacity or not you just get mm. to do it and in, and in, to get more of that is just 
connections, isn't it? So as you said, forcing yourself to get out there, to meet new people, to then collaborate with, which is going to be great because you're going to be doing your Thursdays, which is awesome because batching is always a good kind of um, approach to do it. And yeah, just putting yourself out there for more collaborations to come your way, which I think is great. Mm. Really, really good. And then that's your setup, right? You don't need to pay it, get paid for any of those collaborations. And if if a great track comes out of it and you put it on, um, put it through DistroKid and it gets distributed or, or CD Baby or whatever, then that that's great as well. Mm, absolutely. That's the thing. And like, like you said, the streaming stuff isn't a long-term thing. Yeah. It's more, yeah. it's just a thing. It's just yeah. another thing. If someone Googles me or it's another link on my spot, on my Instagram or whatever, I'm like, I can send you to this if you enjoy what you heard. If you haven't enjoyed, yeah. Yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. It's, it's trying to keep everything super, super light, right? So it's mm. not, it's not too, you know, streaming has to work. Well, streaming is a volume game. So it's going to be a long, long time before you're covering your rent with streaming. You know, it's, it's, it's much, much harder. Well, Absolutely. Uh, Minimum wage. To earn minimum wage on streams alone on Spotify, you have to have uh, 1.1 million streams a month, which mm. most people aren't because, yeah. you know, I think there are 300,000 minutes of music uploaded to Spotify every day. And mm. how many of those are like new artists who think they're going to have a lucky break? <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's impossible to stand I, I, I think it's, um, yeah, it's very difficult. And the way you do it, it's all about the community that you drive. So mm. the people that come to your gigs, how do they know when you're playing next, right? That they, they might not. So how do you how do you keep that going? You know, this whole like mailing list is still consistently a good idea because that's yeah. how you you keep your following going. And I guess coming back to like the first time we we're chatting about like kind of that management of contacts and stuff, having a mailing list to be like, hey, gonna be down with these three artists in Greenwich this week if you're up for it like come and come and see us play and and i think that's always a good thing about building that community of people that um mm. that do like your stuff that will stream your stuff that will pay the tickets to come and see you and all that stuff and again that's a slow burner um as well totally i've got a friend george george holiday who um I might have told you about him last time, but he uh, he has a very committed fan base. I don't know how many mm. followers he has on Instagram, about 4,000. I might just have a little peek, actually. Um, but he's of the opinion, which I think he's right, uh, mm. that having a committed fan base that's a bit smaller is way better than having millions of followers who think you're okay. He's got sure. 4,500 followers on Instagram. and um, But of those 4,500 followers, most of them think that he's one of the best musicians in the world. They just love him. They, he's, a, yeah. he's a producer. Yeah. He releases music. And they're going to be streaming his stuff all the time. But mm. if it's the other way, if you've got 10,000 followers who are always going to stream your song once, then it's like, actually, I think I know what I'd rather have. It, you know? it, it's exactly that, right? It's the right kind of um, balance of intensity of community, uh, you know, and the streams and stuff, which is great. But one thing I would add as well for your like content days, if, you, if you're doing your Thursdays, and if you know that teaching is something you like to do, I would also just have videos of you drumming to tracks um, as well, because people will be like, he's a good drummer, I'd like him to teach me. Mm. You know? So that's, a, that's another kind of mechanism. Yeah, I did a thing. I did a thing before. Oh, here we go. I play along and have the music at the bottom. Oh, awesome, yeah. I'm like playing it, but it's just sort of thing. You can work through this with me if you want. That's kind of how I marketed mm -hmm. that. So I was like, here's a track, here's a song. It's Corey Wong. Everyone loves a bit of Corey Wong. It's fun music. Is that this is quite an easy track, really? I, you know, I teach this to people sort of. Be between grade two and grade four. So nothing like super advanced. Mm. Um, it's easy to sort of manipulate, you know, it gets more complicated, but as a teacher, you can always make things easier or make things harder. Oh, of course, of course. course. But, yeah, um, this is great. And it's having more of these kind of like, um, cause this is quite a, a bit of time to put this thing together. So if you can have like the lighter version on your Instagram, that's just you playing a cover. And it could be that you don't need any of the notation or any other theory stuff as first, cause I think we all love seeing interesting 30 second snippets of something cool and and way more about oh yeah i, I sent you the video about the bass player right um yeah, yeah. Did, did i did you did you watch the video about the solos 
where he played all the right notes and speed and fast and then he played all the wrong notes but slow and, and feeling and people preferred the one where he played the wrong notes and it was all about feeling is the the kind of yeah. the usb the the unique selling point which i found was super fascinating but yeah and he talked yeah. about bb king and alan holdsworth and he was like your grandparents all know who bb king is and yeah he's been dead a long time Alan Holdsworth, who only passed away this year, which was last year. Yeah, they were like, no one's ever heard of him. He's a fantastic musician, but yeah. he shreds. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's, again, coming down to the whole, um, like, ego with, with musicians and all that stuff. Like, it's okay to, like, I don't feel like I'm a good drummer from, like, shredding and doing solos. I hate doing solos. Um, I would much rather just stick with a real solid groove. And that's why I am, I have done teaching in the past, but I've never felt like I'm a great teacher, more so because of my insecurity of, you know, I'm, I don't have all the whistles and bells and all this like super speed and stuff. I'm just a, a solid drummer, right? And I think it's, um, yeah, anytime you're putting stuff together to become a teacher, I hope that you feel like you can teach anyone because even just holding a groove is more important than shredding, you know? No, oh, totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is key. So, yeah, so I've never works. had someone come to me and say, I'd like to learn how to play in 13-8, please. And it's just like, no, no, no. Let's get 4-4 four, four sounding good. That's, the, yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. you want. That's what makes money. <laughs> yeah, for, people for dance sure. To, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. For sure. Awesome. All right. Well, I will uh, leave you to enjoy uh, enjoy the rest of your morning or yeah, morning, afternoon or whatever time it is over just there. About, it's um, still half 11. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So still early. <laughs> that's it. Uh, Anyway, really good chatting with you, Pete. And we'll speak again Likewise, soon. Likewise, thanks so much for this. Cheers, right. mate. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye. Thank you for listening to Dan Ryland's podcast today. Hopefully you've took something away from this session. And please do tweet Dan or DM him via Twitter or Instagram or looked at his LinkedIn if you have any more questions about today or anything about your personal business that you might be struggling about that Dan might be able to help. Hope you have found this enjoyable and see you next time.